listen to people not just judge them or whatever yeah i appreciate it yeah. um so what's your faith uh so i'm kind of more like my perspective is such that you're familiar with like the quote god has no religion i haven't heard it so it's like it's a quote by gandhi but the idea is that like let's say any religion is trying to seek truth and that there's this divine kind of god or i just say we're used to the word god uh it's like a pluralistic yeah. kind of religion well, where all like all these different religions lead to the same place in a sense yeah so okay. if you look at that you kind of strip away every single religion you say all right well then each one might be too specific in its own kind of presuppositions about what reality is whether it's you know hinduism or christianity or you know buddhism or whatever so mine's like all right well i want to know god i want to love i want to love and like you were saying earlier right love thy neighbor as thyself i love yeah. myself unabashedly okay and i try and come from a place of like sincere positivity whenever i speak to anybody or whenever i talk to anyone whenever i hear someone i disagree with my first you know response is let me get angry and i'm sure you get a lot of that i see i watch you know i was watching people walk by you they would like flick you off they would, they would yell at you Look, I can understand why people disagree, but I, I think allowing yourself to get angry because you disagree is like, I would maybe sin is the word, you know, maybe that would yeah. be the word. Well, that's my perspective. Well, what's yours? So, so your your trust, you believe that there's a higher power, basically, oh, that and that multiple religions do lead to uh, ultimately the same place. Potentially, if you follow the right kind of ethic of like love and practice, like. I guess let me ask you this. Let's say, uh, I'll say hypothetically I was a Buddhist, but I, I had that kind of, like, I love people. Like, I, I love fully as a Christian would. Would I, would I burn in hell because I didn't follow Christ, or would I still go to heaven because the love was the same? Like, so, yeah, we have, first we have to define love. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have to ask ourselves who defines love okay. if there's these different perspectives on what love is. Yeah. So Islam has a different understanding of what love is yeah. than Christianity. Yeah. So, my, I'm a Christian. Yeah. I'm always going to go with Christian presuppositions about reality, okay. and it is the truth about reality. And I'm, okay. I'm going to look at any given situation according to God's law, yeah. and and God's law tells me how to love people. Yeah. And so love is treating someone the way that God wants you to treat them. Okay. And so that's how I know what love is. But if, you, and so I'm, tr and I'm, I'm learning that definition from the all-knowing being who created reality okay yeah fair. and so that's why i can trust in that definition of love because the person who gave it to me never lies okay. or the god who gave it to me never lies and he doesn't change and he knows everything okay that's fair. So, so that's my epistemological foundation it's funny i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt you i'm actually uh i was my epistemology class started at 11. yeah i got here at 1109 and i thought man i don't like showing up late let me just go get a journal uh, I really believe things happen for the reason, you know, for a reason. Like, I believe I'm here right now. Yeah, right. To have this conversation. Right. And then I go to epistemology, t you know, on, on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Okay. Anyway. Uh, this, is a, this is epistemology right this here. Is, this is, like, I'm learning epistemology right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay, you're yeah. saying. So, that's okay, so my epistemology. In words, you say you refer to the Christian definition of love, but I'm unacquainted with the Christian definition. So, like, in words, what would you say is the Christian version of love? So, yeah, just, just what I said. Um, love according to god um according to the whole of scripture i would say the whole of scripture that he gives us indicates that love is treating someone the way that god wants you to treat them okay. treating them according to his law okay um and and so the bible says love people the same way you love yourself that's the definition of love yeah. and love god more than anybody okay. so that's that's how you're operating in love okay. uh so problem is like how do you justify the belief that other religions even exist as belief systems that humans believe like how can you justify the belief that humans exist in the first place like in this moment how do we know we exist uh or, right how do you know that humans exist i don't I'm like if, if i'm like i can't I'll, I'll say epistemologically i don't know if i can be certain of like any one thing so I just say I'm sure of many things, or I'm confident in many things, so I'm confident humans exist, right? Like we're all yeah. I like what you're doing, man. Thanks, man. Uh, um, but I would say I can't be certain that we exist, you know, at least not in the way that we would be led to believe we exist. Okay. Are, are you certain that you're not certain? Let's see, that's, that's the paradox of certainty, right? It's like, I don't know. I don't know if I can be certain that I'm not. So, I know, so, right? It's weird. So, it, in, a, in a world in a worldview in which you're not trusting in 
revelation from the omniscient being to tell you it's true. You can't justify beliefs, and knowledge is defined as justified true belief. Okay, yeah. And so, we can't justify any belief we have if we're putting faith in finite and limited consciousness that doesn't have all the facts about reality. That's very Because Because fair. there could always be some fact about reality that we're not aware of that could make untrue everything we think is true. Yes, I so, agree with that. So, so that's why we, in order for knowledge to exist, there must be the omniscient revealer of truth who has all the facts about reality in his mind. Therefore, he is the only one who can reveal those facts to us. Which is, the, which is God. Yes, so that's the proof that God exists, is that if he didn't exist, you could not prove anything. He's the, the foundation for proof. So I agree, I agree with that. The thing I would, con my contention would be, I agree we could not prove if there was not some fundamental kind of truth, but I don't know if I can say because there is not like the truth, I would then say God must be the truth. Does that make sense? Well, like, I don't know if I would, I, I see what you're saying and I understand the logic. I don't know if I'd make the jump though. I think I would stay in the uncertainty and say, well, I don't know if I can be certain I can make that jump to there must be truth from which that, you know, I can derive from everything. But that, go so, ahead, yeah. Do you believe that truth exists? I don't, I, I really don't know. That's like it's a hard one for me. I grapple with this a lot. You know? But are, but aren't you seeking to state a truth when you answer me? Uh, a relative truth, but not an absolute truth. A conditional truth. I think conditional truth exists. Like uh, if I can trust my eyes, it's got it's like cloudy today, right? But that's if I can trust my eyes and my perception. So it's, it's conditional. Well, then it's not really truth because yeah. like you can't prove it. Like you, you you for all you know you could be deceiving yourself, I right? Could be. So You're you right. can't say it's a truth. Fair. It's just your opinion. And, opi and, yeah. and like even using certain language like I yeah. isn't justified because you don't know that your consciousness mm -hmm. even exists as a stream of thought that exists for more than a nanosecond. Yeah. No, maybe right. maybe right. the only type of minds that exist only exist for a nanosecond and maybe what you think is one consciousness having a stream of thought is just a rapid succession of various different consciousnesses coming in and out of existence. Yeah, and yeah. therefore you can't even justify the words that you say when you say I, yeah. because you can't connect the I to the other words that come later. You couldn't connect the I to anything that's concrete or not changing. I could be like, it represents something that's supposed to be stable, but it might not be basically. Right, so the, 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 the consciousness that said I might not exist by the time you get to the other words in a sentence. Right? I would even postulate that it doesn't exist. Like, let's say the I changes across time. Because, like, we, we use human constructs, right? I would say I for Kian. My name is Kian. What's your name, by the way? My name is Matt. 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 Nice to meet you, Matt. Good to meet you. Uh, let's say I refers to Kian. That's my name, right? But as time changes, so do I, right? So the I represents a perennially changing perception of myself. Yeah. Like the person that first talked to you, like even a couple minutes ago, is not necessarily the same person you're talking to now. Because now I have all the information you've thrown at me to kind of to reconcile with. And then, so there is an evolution of I across time, even like, like that, you know what I mean? Well, but the thing is that, yes, in a certain sense, um, but in the Christian worldview, God reveals to us that there are real persons who do have a stream of consciousness that continues through time mm -hmm. and but that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be what it wouldn't be everyone i'm just trying to understand it would be like there's some people but not every person no the bible indicates i would say the bible indicates that humans all humans yeah. there's no reason to believe that it wouldn't be there would be exceptions to this that humans have a mind that has a stream of consciousness that continues through time and that consciousness doesn't exist for only a nanosecond okay in humans okay, okay gotcha so the Bible, uh, my, my epistemology comes from the Bible. I trust what God says about humans. And so I can be justified in believing that that's not the true nature of reality. That it's, uh, consciousness isn't only for a nanosecond. I can yeah. justify that belief by looking at what God says and using his omniscience and the fact that he doesn't lie to justify my belief. Okay. But if you don't have, if you're not trusting in omniscience, then everything you say becomes meaningless because like you can't justify anything you're saying. You're saying if even if you use the word I, if I becomes meaningless. We don't know. Hey Jonas. How you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So so the the I becomes meaningless when you're putting faith in finite limited consciousness because you don't know what I is. Yeah. So wouldn't it make more sense to put faith in a worldview in which omniscience reveals to non-omniscience what's true instead of putting faith in a worldview in which 
non-omniscience is just stuck with itself it in this vicious think. cycle of using consciousness to, to try to validate consciousness in, in this kind of epistemic circular reasoning that can't justify any beliefs or make conclusions that reach truth. The, so, so there's I, I that, the, the, I yeah, those are two different yeah. worldviews you can put faith in. Yeah. So, doesn't it? Wouldn't it make sense to put faith in the one that involves omniscience revealing to non-omniscience what's true instead of putting faith in just non-omniscience? Because you're so, putting faith in n no matter what. So I would say yeah, and yeah, you're right. You're right. My pers like it is a I, either way you look at it, it's a faith-based system. Right. You're Everything's with, faith. Uh, are you familiar with Pascal's wager? I've heard of it. I don't remember what no, it yeah, is. So, so really briefly, Pascal's oh, wager. Oh, I think I do. Yeah, but you can you explain want, it. Yeah, 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 I'll, I'll do it, yeah. So Pascal's wager really simply is like, uh, there's this philosopher and he's saying, all right, let's say God exists. And uh, hypothetically, God exists in one condition. And it's like, well, if God exists and I don't believe in him, then I go to hell, right? Yeah. All right, and if God exists and I do believe in him, then I don't go, I go to heaven, right? You want to say God doesn't exist and I believe in him, but nothing happens. And God exists... Uh, God doesn't exist, and I believe in him, nothing happens, right? Or do, And I don't believe in him, nothing happens. So the point he's making is that, let's say I were to believe, right, it's a safer bet, right, right because right. hypothetically I would burn in hell. Right. And that that is, I would say, a fear of mine in the sense that, like, obviously the, the thought of eternity and suffering is just is terrifying. Right. But if, if, I, if I'm making my decision solely based out of the fear that my afterlife is, like, going to be hell, right, and it's not based out of like I entirely come I come to the conclusion of my own like logic whether or not it's flawed or not yeah that I believe in this I think it would be like uh it wouldn't really be substantive belief you know okay and I'd rather make sure that I'm very very like convinced before okay I'm like all right this makes more sense to me if okay that, if that makes sense but I'm really trying to engage with the ideas like look yeah. I'm, I'm 22 I'm I don't know everything I in fact I'm no nothing technically right so I'm just trying to piece it all together as I go okay. along. Yeah, I'd encourage you to put faith in the worldview in which omniscience yeah. reveals truth to non-omniscient minds. Yeah, I think I think it's a very interesting perspective, and I'm, I'm listening. I'm very listening. I'm, yeah, I think uh, yeah, and uh, if you look at there's this book that's really beautiful. Have you read Siddhartha? I haven't. Uh, so it's it's about uh, well not the Buddha, but like a guy in the time of the Buddha, also named Siddhartha, in his story, and he got to the end, and he was. The very end of the book he's like well more or less within me is everything that's ever existed but like that's within all things if that makes sense so it's kind of like a pantheistic monism it's like all all is one in a sense in a sense so he gets to that point and then his friend govinda who had basically become a, uh, a follower of the buddha at the time had come to him and realized that despite having not listened to uh the buddha's teachings he had achieved he had achieved enlightenment right okay uh which was to basically to see everything within yourself but yourself within everything it's like a paradoxical kind of truth okay which was interesting to me okay. but i think it can be achieved in, in different routes uh is my perspective right well but maybe not well maybe. the bible the bible tells us um to, that a person is a fool when they trust in their own mind mm -hmm. and that we're supposed to um lean not on our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge god okay. and we're supposed to trust in the lord with our whole heart so the bible teaches us that we have a sin nature that corrupts our reasoning and our actions so yeah. we have a natural propensity to worship ourselves and rebel against god and to not think clearly according to the truth of reality okay. and so we need to be regenerated by the Holy Spirit. That's what it means to be born again. It's a second birth. It's a spiritual birth in which the Holy Spirit possesses a person and gives them faith in Jesus. Do you know? Do you understand the basics of the gospel? Uh, so actually, I'm pretty, when it comes to Christianity, I'm more or less ignorant. Like I know the superficial okay. idea of Christianity, but if you were to like ask me about the gospel and all that, uh, I would have to tell you I need education. You know? Okay. Yeah. Because we've all sinned against God and we deserve punishment. Um. We need rescuing. We can't escape this condition on our own of having this these evil desires. Okay. Well, uh, can, uh, what would be like an evil desire in, in, in this definition, like uh, sexuality and like uh, uh, the seven deadly sins? Would that be it? I believe so. It's, so, like anything contrary to God's law, okay. so lust, pride, greed, selfishness that lead to murder, cheating, yeah. stealing. Yeah. Um, abusing other people who are created in the image of God yeah. and who reflect him, insulting God, refusing to believe God, 
doing what pleases us instead of what pleases God, um, sexual sin, things like that, um, not caring about the needs of our fellow image bearers, those things violate God's law. God's law is a standard for morality. But God decided to not leave us in that state of being rebellious. And he, d God is three persons in one being. The second person of triune God became a human around 2,000 years ago, Jesus. And he came to die as a blood sacrifice to serve as a propitiation that turns away the wrath of God. Uh, God, God tells us that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin in the book of Hebrews in the Bible. So God decided to punish his son, Jesus, God the Father, punished God the Son as a substitute and representative on behalf of humans. So the way that God operates is in terms of representatives. The first human being he created, Adam, is a representative of all humanity. And when he sinned against God, God made it so that all his descendants have a sinful nature. And they are represented by him and they're condemned. But then God put forward Jesus as the second, a, a later Adam, who is a second representative on behalf of those humans who trust in him. Okay. So because Jesus died, there's no more punishment. There's no reason to punish people who are represented by him because he died and took well, punishment as their representative. And for all of humanity, right? Across time, into the future, right? For just all time. those who trust in him, not all humans. Okay, so just those that would be Christians. Then, right? All those that God has ordained would, that, that God has chosen to save. Okay. So he chooses some and he doesn't choose others. Okay, and that's, I mean, that would make sense because you, that would be the whole reason why we have heaven and hell in the first place, right? Like to save some because they're, they're like, congruent with our morals and others, they are not congruent. They're the, that's why hell exists. It, is, it, right? it exists to, um, the lake of fire will be God's display of his justice. And so, those who, he, and Jesus not only died for sinners, he died, but he also rose from death. And resurrection. Right. And so that makes possible the resurrection of people spiritually, yeah. when the Holy Spirit possesses a person and gives them faith in Christ,